Have you checked out Change Cars yet? That's the website where you can find your next car because they only list cars from franchise dealers, giving you total peace of mind. That's changecars.co.za. Right, morning everyone. We're here at the Kitty Hawk Aerodrome in Pretoria on a cold and blustery Sunday morning, but not so bad because we have a nice and warm red hot Isuzu D-Max double cab here. Alan has asked me to do the exterior of the car for you because he's away on holiday, so I'm doing exactly that. What do we have? This is actually the entry level LS, not quite entry level, but close to 550 thousand rand uh, variant in the range. The 1.9 litre turbo diesel, which is I think the correct, the correct engine to go for in this particular range. Nice and economical, 110 kilowatts, 350 newton meters, etc, etc. Six speed manual gearbox. Alan will detail all of that when he rabbits on about the interior of the vehicle. As I say, I just get to tell you about the exterior. Looks wise on the Isuzu, I'm not sold, I must be honest. It's fairly conservative in its, in its approach. Not unattractive and in the, to its credit conservative looks tend to last a long time and these buckies we all know last a very long time indeed so you have the looks i suppose one could say that the little fog lights and indicator lenses are quite are quite sweet um, in fact that's not an indicator lens that's just a, a, a probably a dtr and the front of the front of the grill it's not unattractive um, i quite like the fact that we have the red color coded bumpers matching this gorgeous red of the rest of the car if we swing around and have a look at the wheels in the vehicle these are nice big what we like to call thick tackies they are fantastic these are 17 inch rims i wouldn't say they're the most attractive in the entire world they're not unattractive but what they are is they're robust and i suspect that that is built with the idea of potholes in mind that when you go over potholes boulders small cars whatever else this thing is liable to drive over that you're not going to actually damage and break the rim unless you really try extremely hard what i do like again about this car is it's tall when you're trying to get into it but this running board is just a fantastic mechanism of getting into the into the cab itself and it is built like a that ain't going nowhere pretty much the story around the rest of the car if we have a look at the rear tail lights are actually quite attractive i quite like those i must say they they they, they remind me of another vehicle that has something similar loaded up and down tail hitches you actually have to lift it up and down but look at it it is built to last and built to take a bunch of punishment and This particular cab isn't rubberized. I would strongly recommend you do that. And another hint that this is actually built as a workhorse, of course, is this very durable, fantastic looking tow hitch that's attached to the back of the car. So there you have it. It is a D-Max, it is an LS, it is bright red. It even has a high level stoplight for you. And it's a double cab. Okay, well, on the road, it's an interesting contrast to the D-Max I had last week, which of course was the three liter, still a four cylinder diesel, uh, but the three liter version as opposed to this 1.9 I'm driving right now. Uh, that was the extended cab, this is the double cab. Bottom line, the only the difference is do you need the cab space and or do you need the buck space more than you need cab space. The 1.9 puts out 110 kilowatts and I think it's 350 newton meters of torque. We've got a six speed manual gearbox. It's obviously bucky heavy. And what I mean by that is the clutch, the gear shift is quite deliberate. Let me use that word. So you've got to be, uh, you've got to be ready to drive. I think that's a good way of putting it. Uh, Economy-wise, I'm showing 8.8 .8 liters per hundred at the moment. 
Bigfoot's going to get it. Let's see what he does to the economy. <laughs> hey, challenge, suppose, challenge accepted. I suppose you will ruin it again, my lad. <laughs> but, you know, I said in the review of the 3 litre and remembering that that's got 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, the point of these Suzus is you're not going to kill them. There's just no way. These things will go for half a million or even a million kilometers if you look after it properly and maintain it decently. And that's what Isuzu is all about. So in the category, you like Isuzu, you love Isuzu, you know you're going to buy another Isuzu. Uh, I think it could probably do with an update. William, you're very quiet at the moment. Uh, you've driven the competitors, shall we simply use that, that have just been launched. What do you think of the ride refinement, something like that, compared to the new the new competitors? Um, so I've just been in this for a couple of couple of minutes, and I mean, it's, uh, uh, we say we covered it a bit in our podcast actually, Al, about the ride quality on the on on these D Maxes is is very bucky like. So yeah, it doesn't have. I think you actually summed it up quite nicely, which is annoying me because I didn't think of it first. <laughs> was SUV ride in a bucky? Yeah, and and that's kind of what this is not. The, and the, the difference would be. I haven't, I don't think you either have tested the new one with yeah. the load. Yeah. And, and Whereas that, we know this will take the load. Well, that's exactly it. So if, if, if it, you know, the Isuzu is designed as a workhorse, it's yeah. designed to ferry large things around and lots of lots of stuff around. And that's, from that point of view, yeah. And you know, Isuzu is... As, 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 as we also said in the in the in the podcast, they don't die of natural causes. No, they, no. Uh, they, you, you they, they kill them or they keep going. They just don't wear out. Yeah. So you know, it's it's from that point of view, it's a solid it's a solid vehicle. Um, okay. Now this one we're in now is the LSE. Okay. Yeah. It's the rear wheel drive, two wheel drive version. Yes. Not the four x four. No. It's got a diff lock. Yeah. And it's got a hill descent control. I see. Yeah. Okay. So it's got that. For if you wanted it for dirt roads, basically, all right. Yeah. But where it benefits is it hasn't got the weight of the 4x4 hardware. This so that's possibly why the economy. I've, I've just dropped it to 8.7 while we cruise this, the highway. This is this would be my choice in the double cab space of of, yeah. of, of offerings from Dmax. This would be the one. Yeah, I, I I would tend to agree with you. It's not the top top spec, no. but I mean it's got look, it's got a decent screen, it's got air conditioning, it's got a USB. It's got all those sort of things, so what more do you want there? How much cheaper is it? Okay, this one is 553. You see, that's a lot of, there's a lot of... So it's 150,000 cheaper than the extended cab 4x4. Yes. 3 litre. Yes. So... That's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of top. My only thing is with this 1.9, I've discovered the gearing in the manual. You know, if you, I'm talking not on a freeway, I'm talking in traffic duty. First and second are very low, very yeah. short gears. Yeah, you go to third, and there's a hole. Yeah. And it says, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> the turbo doesn't spool up, it takes its time. But you know what, you can, you get used to something like this, you drive around it, am I correct? I will work it out when I yeah. have it over the weekend, yeah. But you know, you, you, you own this vehicle, you drive it for a while, you'll, you'll, You'll learn how to drive around that. Yes, I'm sure. So really, I mean, overall, take it in its true context, I think it's a pretty good offering. Yep. And on that note, he's behind the camera, he's William Ledford Kelly. I'm Alan R. We're both from Motor Matters. See you next time.